Sadly, since the turn of the century, Illinois football has been known as one of the most irrelevant programs in all of college football. They've made a grand total of five bowl games, and for the most part, have always sat at the bottom of the Big Ten. But Illinois has a decently storied history, and some really good players in its program's history. It's been really tough sledding the last 25 years, but this season, things have completely changed. Led by second-year head coach Brett Bielema, the Illini have a dark horse Heisman contender, have a 7-1 record, a real chance at winning the Big Ten, and the program looks to be on the uptick. In today's video, we're going to talk about the impossible rise of Illinois football, go through how all of this has happened, the events leading up to it, and my opinion about what the future of the program could look like. But before we get started, we are just over 4,000 subscribers away from hitting 100k, so be sure to help me out by hitting that subscribe button, leave a like if you want to support today's video, turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload, and let me know what player, team, coach, or situation I can cover in my next one. Now, let's get started and talk about the impossible rise of Illinois football. In order to understand how Illinois football got to this point, we first need to go back in time though. In the year 2000, their head coach was Ron Turner, and the team had just gone 5-6. and six. That was pretty standard for Illinois as of the last two years, but 2001 would actually be a really good year for the Illini. They go 10-2, and two, where they'd eventually lose in the Sugar Bowl, and were ranked as high as number 12 at one point. From there, though, the Ron Turner era would disappear, as he'd have three straight losing seasons before he was fired in favor of Ron Zook. Ron Zook was the head coach at Florida, but after not working out there, he decided to take the Illinois job. In his first two years, the team went 1-15 went in, in conference play, but all of a sudden, they came out of nowhere. In 2007, the Illini would go 9-4, would beat Ohio State on the road, and then eventually went to the Rose Bowl. It was quite a crazy year for the Illini, and memorable guys such as Juice Williams and Nathan Shieldhouse would rule the Ron Zook era. They'd end up making a bowl game in both 2010 and 2011 before they would move on to Tim Beckman. Tim Beckman was freshly hired from the University of Toledo and he was expected to turn things around, except it did not go as planned. In their first two years, the team once again went 1-15 before they would have somewhat of a breakout season in 2014 as they'd go 6-7 and, and lose in the heart of Dallas Bowl. This loss came to Louisiana Tech and Beckman would end up getting fired. There's also some controversy behind the scenes on how he treated players, so it was definitely a rough look going out. They'd promote offensive coordinator Bill Cubitt to the job, and he'd go five and seven in his one year. After that, they decided to do a whole coaching search and came up with a really good idea for a coach. They grabbed Lovey Smith. After getting fired from two different NFL franchises, they thought that Lovey could come in, change the program, and recruit at a higher level. Except that really didn't happen. Illinois rebranded to Liddyville, and at times there was a lot of mockery of the program. Lovey struggled tremendously to get things going in Champaign. The team went 3-9 in 2016, 2-10 in 2017, and 4-8 in 2018. In three years there, they hadn't even won 10 games, and they had four total conference wins. It was a disastrous start, but 2019 would be a fun one for Illinois fans. While they did not win the Big Ten West or make a big-time bowl game, they had a couple of memorable moments. They beat an undefeated Wisconsin team by way of a game-winning field goal, had one of the biggest comebacks in school history against Michigan State, and then ended up getting their sixth win to get to the Red Box Bowl. Unfortunately, they lost that one, but making a bowl game and having some fun moments was what the Illinois fan base wanted, and they were starved of all that. Except, they get fed up pretty quickly. In 2020, Illinois returned a ton of starters, but the team went 2-6, and six, and eventually Lovey was fired, and Rod Smith was made the interim guy. In the last 10 years, Illinois had never finished higher than 5th in the Big Ten West, and that's why they needed a change. They decided to hire Brett Bielema. At the time, this was seen as very controversial, as Bielema had flamed out at Arkansas, and his glory days at Wisconsin were a long time ago. Some thought his old school style and system would not work, but that's what Illinois needed. They needed someone to change the culture, change the way they played, and get them back to being tough to beat. Bielema was brought in to do that, and he was excited for his future in Illinois. Bielema's past was also in Illinois, as he was apparently born in Illini Hospital and grew up in Prophetstown, Illinois. He'd eventually play at the University of Iowa under Hayden Fry, and then blew up in the coaching world and had those stints at both Wisconsin and Arkansas. Bielema was really excited to come home and really optimistic for the future. He said, quote, We will build an outstanding staff for both player development and recruiting. The University of Illinois has incredible facilities and is known as one of the world's outstanding academic institutions. We will hold young men on our team responsible both on and off the field while coaching them to be champions of life. Jen and I, along with our girls, are excited to get the champagne and get started on the journey. There was a little bit of Butch Jones humor 
in that opening statement, but he would actually deliver on his promises. Last year, the Illini had some good players. Kirby Joseph was a star safety, Chase Brown was an 1,000 yard rusher, and third year starter Brandon Peters was back. Unfortunately, in their first game, Peters would go down, but Art Sikowski would come in and help lead them to a week zero win over Nebraska. This would become the first win of the Bielema era, but then difficulty would hit. They'd lose by seven at home to UTSA, got blown out on the road against Virginia, and then lost a heartbreaker by three against Maryland. The one and three start was not great, but they had a chance to beat Purdue. After going on the road and staying in it the entire time, the offense just could not do enough and now Illinois was off to a one and four start, except Bielo would start to get it going. They would beat Charlotte the following weekend, and then after a loss to Wisconsin, would go on the road and beat number seven, Penn State. They controlled the line of scrimmage and controlled the tempo and ended up getting this game to overtime, where as we all know, no one could score, and the Illini won 20 to 18 in nine overtime. It was one of the most wild games of the 2021 season, and Illinois was hoping to build off that momentum. They almost did, and in a game they desperately needed to win for hopes of a bowl game, they lost 20 to 14 to Rutgers. After that though, they ended up going on the road and beat number 20 Minnesota before they'd play it close with Iowa. This would give them their seventh loss of the year, officially eliminating them from bowl eligibility, but they would go out in style, beating Northwestern 47 to 14 to get to a five and seven record. Year one under Bielema had a lot of bright spots. They had two top 25 wins, won four total conference games, and were competitive in all but about two games. That was much better than Lovey Smith and Tim Beckman. At the same time, Illinois fans wanted to see wins. Expectations going into this year weren't very high, but Bielema would bring in a new offensive coordinator, grab a new transfer quarterback, and return some really important players. At quarterback, they would bring in Syracuse transfer Tommy DeVito. DeVito was a big time recruit coming out of high school and had extremely high expectations at Syracuse after the Eric Dungy era. Unfortunately, he'd never be able to put it all together, but in Brett Bielema's system, DeVito got a lot better. He also had a reliable backup in Sikowski, and then as I said, brought back his most important player on the team, Chase Brown. He was an under-recruited player at a high school who grew up in Canada, spent time at Western Michigan, and has now developed into one of the top running backs in all of college football. He also had a couple of good backups in Reggie Love, Chase Hayden, and Josh McCray. And then the receiving room was balanced. Former blue chip recruit Isaiah Williams was back, Pat Bryant was there, Brian Hightower was there, and then the all too reliable Casey Washington was also back. Add in the fact that you had a great defense, a big offensive line, and a culture change, Illinois had a chance to be good this year. Except no one was ever talking about that. All off season, I heard nothing about Illinois, and everyone assumed they'd probably be sixth in the West, just beating out Northwestern. Except, Illinois took all that to heart and has had a monster season. In week zero, they would beat Wyoming 38-6, getting to a 1-0 start. In week two, they'd have to travel on the road to Bloomington, Indiana to play against the Hoosiers. I was personally at that game, and Illinois dominated the entire time, but made a bunch of dumb mistakes, and when the defense really needed a stop, they gave up a late drive to the Hoosiers, and Sean Shivers would win the game for Indiana. This was a 23-20 loss for Illinois, and it looked like it was the same old Illini, and they'd be off to a bad year. Indiana has completely fallen apart since then, but Illinois has done the opposite. The following week, they went and beat Virginia 24-3, and while that win did look impressive at the time, Virginia is awful now. Illinois didn't care, though. They would shut out Chattanooga before a huge homecoming game for Coach Bielema. After spending all that time at Wisconsin, this would be his return trip to Camp Randall. And what did they do? They pushed Wisconsin around all four quarters in 134 to 10, and this resulted in Paul Chris getting fired. Bielema's Illini were now four and one, and were starting to gain more respect. The next week, they had a defensive game against Iowa, as they ended up winning nine to six, and they are now one win away from a bowl game. After that, they'd come home and beat Minnesota. Before this past weekend, they go on the road and beat Nebraska 26 to nine. Currently, the Illini are seven and one, with a four and one record in the Big Ten. A big reason for this has been the emergence of Chase Brown. He leads the country in rushing with 1,208 yards, but sadly, he only has five touchdowns. His Illinois offense doesn't score a lot of points, but they're great at managing the clock, and the defense has been insane. This has been historically great for Illinois. They've won seven of their first eight games for the first time since 2001, and with wins against Purdue and Michigan State, they would clinch the Big Ten West title in mid-November. And it wouldn't even matter what would happen against Michigan or Northwestern. Illinois is now ranked for the fourth straight week for the first time since 2011, and was also just ranked in the college football playoff rankings. While I did see some chatter about them still having playoff contention, some are saying that Illinois has a chance to make the playoff. And actually, I agree. Normally I wouldn't say this, but if they were to win out, they would have road wins against 
against both Michigan and then likely either Michigan or Ohio State. Let's assume it's going to be Ohio State in that one if they beat Michigan. So that would give them a 12-1 record, a Big Ten title, and two victories over likely top five opponents. Despite that three-point loss to Indiana in week one, I think Illinois would actually get in. This does sound very far-fetched and it's probably not going to happen but to rule them out would be a crime. They definitely wouldn't pass the eye test for the big TV market. I think it'd be really hard to leave them out at that point. So what has made Illinois so good? Well, first and foremost, it's gotta be Chase Brown. He's been the best running back Illinois has had in a long time and is going to play in the NFL. He's only the fourth power five running back to rush for over 100 yards in their first eight games, with the other three being JJ Arrington, Adrian Peterson, and Ezekiel Elliott. That's elite company to be in. And also the quarterback play has been so much better. Tommy DeVito has jumped in and had one of the best statistical seasons for an Illini quarterback since Nathan Shieldhouse. While he's not gonna be at the top statistically in the Big 10, he's been really productive as he ranks third in the nation in completion percentage. His passer rating is sixth in the conference and he's on pace to break the Illinois QBR record of 141.6, which was set by West Lunt back in 2014. Because of Brown, the offensive line and the quarterback play, Illinois has been better on offense but defense has been where things have been terrific. Bielema hired defensive coordinator Ryan Walters away from Missouri, and it's turned out to be an incredible hire. Before the Nebraska game, they led the FBS in points allowed with just 8.86 per game, and that'll go up a little bit because Nebraska scored nine points. Being a little bit sarcastic with that one, but it is really hard to score on Illinois' defense right now. As I said, Bielema always knows how to have good running backs and good offensive lines, so that's been a key. And then finally, I think it's the culture. He's made all his players buy into it, He's developed a lot of over-recruited players, and I think they're truly taking it with a one-play-at-a-time mindset. It's been really exciting seeing the rise of Illinois, and a matchup between the Illini and Ohio State would be really interesting. While many would say this is a blowout, while many would say this is going to be an extreme blowout, I'd like to play devil's advocate and see this Ohio State offense go up against arguably the top defense in college football. I think that'd be very interesting to see, and while I would put my money on Ohio State, who knows at this point? Either way, I'm happy for Illinois. It's been cool to see the rise of the program, and I think the future is bright as BLMO will continue this system that works. What do you guys think, though? If you're an Illinois fan, what do you think of the rise of the program? What are your expectations for the rest of the season? And what are your thoughts on the future of the program? Be sure to let me know down below. If you're a fan of another school, let me know what player, topic, team, or situation I could do next. Leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.